Welcome to Excel magic trick number 1469. Hey, in this video, we got to see how to add rainfall by day with a variable start hour. And in this video, we'll see how to do it with a helper column and a pivot table. In Excel Magic Trick 1470, we'll see how to do it with Power Query. And then in 1471, we'll see how to do it with array formulas. Now, here's our starting data set. And we have time stamp. That means there's a day and a time. Then we have the rain totals. Over here, we need to use a pivot table to add the total rainfall for each day. But here's the twist. This person said they wanted to be able to put a number here like 5 AM, 10 AM, 1 PM. And then the totals for each day will actually be, when we get to 8-3-2017, if I put a 5 here, the starting time to add for this category is 5 AM on 8-3-2017 all the way to the next day at 5 AM. That means on this row right here, the category includes some times it's from 8-3, but it will also include some times up to exactly 5 AM from the next day. All right, let's go over to the sheet 1469. All right, now the first trick is going to be we have date and time. Well, if everything right up to, but not including 5 AM, for 8-1 really needs to be the previous day. Then if I subtract 5 AM from all of these, that will send the day and time back to the previous day, which is what I need to categorize this as 731 the previous day. And then all of these times, the lower end will include the 5 AM. And if I go all the way down to 8-2, but not including 5 AM, all of those should be categorized as 8-1. All right, so all we have to do is subtract from each date time 5 AM. Now, in order to do that, you need to understand what time is. When I enter 5 colon 0, 0 space AM, control five, enter, that tells Excel that I want 5 AM. But if you look up into the formula bar, we can see in both places, it's actually showing us number formatting. We need to know what's really in the cell. So I'm going to erase the number formatting by going to Home, Number Group, Custom, and point to General. What? It's a decimal? Yes, anytime, and I'm going to Control-Z, you enter 5 AM. Here's what Excel does. Equals 5 hours through the day divided by total number of hours in a day. So when I enter that formula, that's what Excel does. So in order to subtract 5 AM from all of those date times, we need to go from 5 to the equivalent decimal. So I'm going to say equal sign, left arrow to get that 5 divided by 24. Now if I come and change this to 10 AM, instantly it will work. Now I want to prevent anyone from entering the wrong number of hours into this cell. So I'm going to come over to this column and type 0, because we want to be able to say it starts exactly at midnight. And then 1, Enter. I'm going to highlight both of these numbers, which have an increment of 1, or the pattern is Add 1. Then I'm going to point to the Fill handle. And when I see my Angry Rabbit, I'm going to click and drag to create a list of hours from 0 to 23. Those are the possible shifts we can make for our date times. Now I'm going to come over to this cell, go up to Data, Data Tools, Data Validation button, or I can use the keyboard, or I can use the keyboard Alt-D-L. Now Data Validation, by default, allows anything in the cell. But we don't want to allow anything. I want to allow only from a list. Now when I allow from a list, I can give it a source, and it will give me an in-cell dropdown. So I'm going to highlight the entire column, 0 to 23. There it is. Click OK. And now I have my dropdown. Now I'm not going to allow anyone to put anything except for the correct integer hour. Now I'm actually going to highlight these, point to the edge, and click and drag to move it over here. We'll, I'll leave it there as a trail. 
Now we can come over here and we'll create our formula. Equal sign, left arrow, left arrow. And we will subtract the time equivalent for whatever integer hours we put there. Now we need to lock this, so I hit the F4 key to put those dollar signs in. Control, Enter, double click, and send it down. And look at that. Here we have 731.17. And sure enough, that's the last time, 6.30 AM, before we got to R7. And all of these are adjusted backwards. Now, for our label in our pivot table, I only want the date part of this. Now, if I wipe away the number formatting here, we talked about what time is. I'm going to apply general. That's the eraser. It erases all the number formatting. Dates are serial numbers. It's the number of days since December 31st, 1899. So that's 42,947. So all we need to do to get rid of the time is to remove the decimal. I'm going to Control Z to undo that, F2 to put it in edit mode. We will simply take the integer part of that, and it will remove the decimal. Close parentheses, Control Enter. Now, before I copy it down, I'm going to apply a number formatting because I don't need the time number format anymore. I'm going to come up and select Short Date, and that will do it. Double click and send it down. And if we check, there's 7 AM. That is 8-1. And if I highlight all the way down to the first 8-2, and there it is, 6-30 and then 7. Now I'm going to click in a single cell, and we have what we want. The date column will define our row in the pivot table, and then we can add from the range total. Click in a single cell, Insert, Tables Group, Pivot Table, or we simply use the keyboard Alt N V. It guessed right because we have a proper data set with field names, records, and rows, and empty cells all the way around. I want to put this on the existing sheet location. Let's try E8. Click OK. The rest of this will be quite easy. We take our new category we created down to rows. Instantly, we get a unique list. Oh, look at that. In 2016 Excel that I'm using, it automatically groups. Now, normally, I, I drag this off or I right click ungroup. But Mr. Excel showed me a great trick the other day. As soon as I drag and it groups and I don't want it to group, Control Z to undo that. And those are the dates we want. It's a unique list, one of each day from this column. No, 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 from this column, the new date column. Now I drag rain total down to values. Because it's a number, it defaults to sum. And there you go. There is our pivot table. Now, here's the thing. If I come up, I should have changed the column width here. If I come up and change this to 5, watch what happens when I hit Enter. It'll change over here, but not the pivot table. Enter. It changes over here. But to get the pivot table to update, you have to remember to right click Refresh. Or you can use in the Data Ribbon tab. Refresh or Refresh All, whichever one you want. When I click Refresh, then it updates. Now, in our next two videos, we'll see how to do it with Power Query, which I think this probably method here is easier than Power Query. And Power Query requires that we refresh. If you have the data coming externally, like in lots of text files, then Power Query would be better. But we do want to see how to do the same solution in Power Query. And then we'll see how to do it with array formulas and have no helper column. And the advantage to array formulas is that when we change this, everything instantly updates. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and sub, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is fun. We'll see you next video.